My buddy Tristan Barnett sent me a box of cool stuff recently. Check out his YouTube channel. He collects and restores pocket knives, makes his own knives, and has cleaned up a few wood handle screwdrivers. This wrench was one of the items he sent me. It was marked 1730 seconds on one end, along with forged in the USA, and 7 sixteenths on the other end. It was thinner than a standard wrench, and it had a bend to it. The opposite side had what looked like a circle with an X inside. The markings on the handle looked like they were added by a previous owner. And the other end had a 1 stamped in it. I usually use mineral spirits to clean up old tools, but Super Clean sent me some of their degreaser to try. I used a wire brush to scrub off the grime and loose rust. I think the Super Clean did a decent job. After rinsing the wrench in water and thoroughly drying it, I gave it a couple coats of paste wax. Okay, here's the wrench cleaned and waxed. I think the Patina Boys would be proud of my work. Here's a better look at the Circle X marking. Alloy Artifacts has a handy company logo image identification table. Turns out the X circle is actually a stylized DC for Durochrome. The history of Duro metal products and its relationship with Industro manufacturing is very interesting. I recommend checking out Alloy Artifacts' very thorough history of the two intertwined companies. According to Alloy Artifacts, Duro used the Circle X or DC logo for government contracts dating from 1943 to 1945. These wartime tools would have had a plain or cadmium finish. I found a post-war version of the wrench in a 1951 catalog. It's a number D1 tappet wrench. The finish is described as chrome-plated and mirror-polished. On an L-head or flathead gasoline engine, the intake and exhaust valves are parallel to the cylinder and piston. The valve's motion and timing are controlled by the camshaft and tappets. It is important to maintain a specific clearance between the tappet and the valve stem. Here's a comparison of the flathead tappet setup next to the more modern overhead valve pushrod arrangement. To adjust the valve clearance, two wrenches and a feeler gauge are used. You can see how a thinner set of wrenches would be handy for this job. I can also imagine why adding a bend to the wrench handle would be helpful. Doro actually sold tappet wrenches in sets of two of each size. I thought it was interesting that my D1 wrench was not included in the sets offered in the same 1951 catalog. This wrench has definitely seen some use. My research suggests that half-inch was the most common tappet wrench size. For instance, half-inch tappet wrenches would have been used on the flathead four-cylinder engines found in Jeeps. So based on my research, this tappet wrench with the X-Circle logo was only made by Duro for a few years to fill government contracts during World War II. The mechanic who owned it cared enough about keeping it that he or she marked it. I think the same mechanic added the bend in the handle to make it more ergonomic. That's why I chose to let the Patina Boys win this battle. I think this particular tool has earned its dings, dents, bends, and pits. It is more valuable to me preserved as it is rather than straightened and polished. Thanks to Tristan for sending the wrench my way. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Ah! I hear you, Chuck. We didn't get to flitz anything. Tristan also sent me this lockback pocket knife. Chuck and I cleaned it up, sharpened the blade, and used our flitz polish to make the brass shine like new. I'll pin a link and coupon code in the comments. 
you'll save 20% on Flitz Paste Polish and help Chuck and me out a little.